How many of you go Christmas shopping? Come on now, yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of become a tradition where you go Christmas shopping to prepare for your journey <coughs> home, back to your place of birth, perhaps, back to where your family dwells. Maybe you live in a home where your family journeys back to you, but it's a part of our preparation. Part of our Advent time is going shopping. Now, <clears throat> we're going to be reflecting all through Advent about the journey home. <clears throat> the home to our loved ones and the home to our Lord. And today I'm <clears throat> taking on a big topic called commercialism. And it'd be really easy for me to just attack commercialism and say it's no good, it should be banned from Christmas, and we as Christmas, at gunpoint, uh, we as Christians should take our Christmas back. I'm going to come at it at a little different vantage point. I'm going to turn our hearts first to Isaiah 9-2. <clears throat> the people walking in darkness. I'm going to stop right there. The people walking in darkness. What do we call that Friday right after Thanksgiving? Black Friday? Dark Friday? Huh? Well, is it really dark? Let me tell you what happened this year. A woman accused of using pepper spray to ward off other shoppers from a just-revealed Xbox display at Walmart in California has re reportedly turned herself in to authorities. Oh, isn't that nice? The woman unleashed the chemicals at around 10.20 p.m. on Thursday night, injuring about 20 shoppers. It was a burning feeling in my throat for me, one victim said. There was a lot of people who got it in their eyes. They were burning. They were screaming. They were crying. Nothing a 10% off coupon can't fix, though. At another Walmart in Connecticut, police used a taser to subdue a man who got in a fight with another customer while waiting to purchase a video game. A boy was knocked to the ground during the melee shortly after the police stepped in. Another fight broke out in an electronics department, yes, in Walmart. I'm not attacking Walmart, get this, in Rome, New York. Less than five minutes after the store opened on Friday morning, a man was arrested and two women were taken to the hospital. Occupy Wall Street protesters got into the mix of mayhem in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A protester dressed as a zombie refused to um, uh, the mall security's request to remove the makeup. The mall bans the obscuring of a person's face. They was there to protest commercialism. Another Walmart uh, customer in Connecticut, a 32-year-old man, was again tased by police at 12.15 a.m. after cutting about 20 people in line and refusing to get to the back of the line. Didn't they teach him that in elementary school? Very little angers people more than someone cutting ahead of them in line. In North Carolina, an off-duty police officer pepper sprayed Walmart shoppers who were fighting over a heavily marketed smartphone. One person was arrested. The cost of the fine exceeded the saving on the smartphone. <laughs> Everywhere, people got robbed at gunpoint, carjacked in parking lots, and this didn't happen just at Walmart stores. Crazy? Well, if some of you still think it's not crazy, show them what I'm talking about, Garrett. Hopefully this works. Turn up the volume so we get a full effect. Shopping 
for towels, for crying out loud. Now, if any of you went out on Black Friday, I'm not attacking you. I just want us to regain just a little bit of perspective in the midst of our buying Christmas presents for each other. The people who walk in darkness, and I got to say, if that's how crazy you are when you're shopping on the Black Friday, you are dark and a little bit crazy and a little bit lost. Slow down. The people who are caught in darkness, what comes next? They have seen a great light. Those living in the shadow of death, upon them, light has dawned. What does this light look like? Well, Isaiah prophesies this centuries before that event in Bethlehem. He says, For to us a child is born, a son is born, is given. The government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal of the Lord God Almighty will accomplish this thing. Black Friday. You know why it's called Black Friday? It was coined back in 1960s, originally in Philadelphia, because the traffic was so heavy you couldn't get around anywhere, so they called it a Black Friday. And then it was turned into something more positive. For those in the retail world, it is the day that they see that they get out of red and get into the black. Black Friday. I would love to teach the world about the real Black Friday. It's not in retail stores. It's a Friday that we call good. Because Christmas, guys, is about the coming of Jesus Christ so that he can save the entire world from its sins and from its darkness, that the light of God can shine upon mankind, revealing our sins, but also showing us the path to eternal life so that we can be saved. Everything else, everything else about Christmas is just window dressing. So here's my challenge. I want us as Christians to take Christ back into the marketplace. Not try to get rid of the marketplace out of Christmas, but take Christ into the marketplace. That's why I selected the second lesson that I did, because St. Paul is teaching us something. It starts out by saying he goes into the Areopagus in Athens, Greece. Do you know what the Areopagus is? It's Village Point. That's basically what the Areopagus is. It's an open door market. And so just put your minds there. St. Paul goes in to Village Point And what does he do? He walks around. And he's walking around, and he sees these great big red Christmas balls, and he sees ornate greenery everywhere. He sees signs, happy holiday everywhere. And what does he say? He says, as I look around, I see that that you're a very festive people. That that you are a holy people, that you are a very deeply religious people because you have banners that say, Happy Holiday. Do you know what holiday is? Happy Holy 
day. That's what they're really saying. Don't tell the world that. They think they got something. And St. Paul says, I see you have happy holiday, but it's kind of nondescript. Let me tell you about the God of this holy day that you're celebrating. And he began to tell them from the beginning of creation all the way through the death by crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, telling them about their unknown God. What I want us to do is to go into the 2011 Areopagus's, <laughs> walk around, look around, and say, let me tell you the entire story. Walk around your Walmart, your shopping mall, your Target, wherever you shop. Look at those decorations and take the opportunity to tell others. If you don't know what to say, just go to first John or John first chapter verses 11 and 12 he came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him yet all who received him to those who believe in his name he gave the right to become the children of god that's talking about the real black friday it's talking about Good Friday, it's talking about Jesus Christ coming into our midst and in all the craziness of people trying to buy towels. They don't even recognize him. Don't even acknowledge him. Don't even recognize that this is his holy day. Something I like doing is when I go through Starbucks and I got somebody behind me, I like buying their drink and then just driving off. And it's so funny watching people speed trying to catch me to honk and wave with a big smile on their face. And I got this idea. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I might. I'll pray about it. I'm thinking that I might write up a bunch of cards that wish the person behind me a Merry Christmas, and this is just an anonymous gift to them, and maybe put a scripture verse on it or something. You know, not, not just bam in your face type stuff, but, but demonstrating Christian charity and, and wishing them a Merry Christmas and, and seeing if the person running the cash register would give that card to them. I, I'm anticipating it will work once, and then Starbucks will have some corporate, you know, thing come down from above where they can no longer do that. Right? So I might get one shot at this. So if you beat me to it, I'll know that you did it before me if they won't do that. But I'm wondering, what will that do to that person behind me? Will that break, you know, this craziness at Christmas and help them refocus upon their Lord? I got another crazy idea. You know, the bell ringers, they're, they're everywhere for the Salvation Army. And do you ever watch people? They're suddenly really interested in signs. And they're real interested in the lights in the store. And they're real interested in the cracks in the sidewalk even as they walk by these guys, right? It's a, you know, right? And... I like walking by them, looking them in the eye, and wishing them a Merry Christmas. If I got a little extra change, I'll throw it in there. But I thought, what if I not just greeted them and didn't just give them money, but what if I stopped and actually talked to them, asked them how it's going, let them know that I appreciate their ministry, and then maybe ask them, this is way out there. Maybe say to them, is there anything I can pray for you? Pray for, you know, personally or, or for your ministry? And then stand there and pray for this person as people are going in and out of the store. 
Not sure I'll do that. I've got to think about that a little bit more and you know, pray about that. And I'm sure that'll happen probably once before they get real uncomfortable. When you check out and you're at Lowe's and you're buying your favorite pastor that gifts, I mean, I didn't really say that. <laughs> you're, you're at Lowe's and you're checking out. A lot of times, I've discovered, this is me, I've discovered a lot of times I don't really look at the checkout person. I don't look at their name. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. Maybe some of you do, do it differently. But I'm going to try now to see their name and to look them in the eye and I'm going to spend a little extra time there and tell them what a great job I think they're doing. Unless they're really bad at their job. I'm going to tell them how much I appreciate what they're doing. Because I have a feeling that these retail checkout people feel pretty beat up by this time of year. By a lot of people who treat them like dirt. Right? And I'm going to try to raise the bar. Show a little Christian hospitality and charity. And then I'm going to be real bold and wish them a Merry Christmas, even if they tell me Happy Holiday. And then, <laughs> if I'm checking out at a place and someone wishes me Happy Hol Holy Day or Holiday, I might just take the time to explain to them what the word holiday means and that the one that they're referring to is Christmas and tell them thanks. We have a great opportunity, guys. We have a tremendous opportunity as Christians not to get all bent out of shape, not to become gnarly and antagonistic about all the consumerism going on at Christmas. We have a great opportunity where the world, the world is celebrating our holy day. In love, out of respect, out of Christian charity. Let's just tell them what it's all about. Let's just let them know the promise and the truth contained in this holy day. God has given us a great opportunity. Let's not squander it. Let's not waste it. Let's embrace it. Would you join me in prayer?